Today's recipe goes out to all those out there who love meatloaf but are a little tired of their normal meatloaf. I'm making a sort of Greek-inspired turkey meatloaf. So it's both a little bit lighter than your regular and it's got some great new flavors in it. Heat some olive oil and add one chopped, or diced really, very small, red onion, two stalks of celery, also cut very small, and two cloves of garlic. I like to start off my meatloafs by sauteing my aromatics. Some recipes will have you just put the raw ingredients directly into the meatloaf, which is good and it does save time, but I find that it actually waters out a little bit during cooking and that doesn't give the meat a great texture. So I prefer to do it this way. Also, it builds flavor. They're, they're gonna be more flavorful if you cook them ahead of time than if you just put them right in. You just need to cook until the onions are translucent. I wanna add just a little bit of salt before I finish cooking these. I think these are looking really good. I'm gonna stop cooking them and let them cool just a bit while I get the rest of my stuff ready. Here I have two pounds of ground turkey. One is dark meat and one's light meat, so set that aside for a sec. I'm gonna flavor this with some fresh dill, which I'm gonna chop up just a little bit more. You'll need a quarter cup of chopped dill. This is probably gonna be more than a quarter cup, so better safe than sorry. That's what I always say. So I'm using some fresh dill. I'm using a little bit of feta cheese. It's really yummy and fresh, and it is a little bit different than your classic, but I think you're really gonna like it. Mmm, well, pretty close, actually. Here, that's a quarter cup. Add that to your meat. Then add two slices of bread. I just pulse this a little bit in the food processor. You can cut it into cubes or just tear it up yourself. Whatever appeals to you. Just gives a nice lightness and also binding to your meatloaf. One egg. I'm using my safety method of actually cracking it before I add it to the bowl. Whisk it a little bit and then add. You want to season it with salt and pepper. And normally I don't do measured amounts, but in stuff like this where you can't really taste the pre-cooked thing, I do. So I'm using one and a quarter teaspoons of coarse salt. I mean, you're not going to want to taste this raw, so I'm saving you. <laughs> Half a teaspoon of freshly ground pepper. Then add the vegetables that you sauteed. You don't want to leave those out. Don't add your feta cheese yet. You want to wait until everything is all mixed so that it doesn't get too broken up. So just go in there and mix all of this together. Don't over mix or it'll get dense, but you definitely want everything well combined. That's why you use your hands, just so you're not overworking the mixture. When it seems like everything is almost completely in there, then you add your feta cheese. It's four ounces of crumbled feta. And then just gently mix that in and that's your whole meatloaf mixture. Have a baking sheet lined with parchment paper. You wanna pre-do that, because your hands are gonna be messy, and transfer your meat onto the baking sheet. This is not being baked in a loaf pan. Shape it into a 10 by four inch loaf, approximately, and have your oven preheating to 350 degrees. It should take about 45 to 55 minutes to cook through. When your meatloaf is cooked, let it sit for about 10 minutes. That helps the juices redistribute throughout and makes it easier to slice. You're gonna love it. It slices nicely. You're gonna wanna serve this maybe with a nice fresh salad. Try this lighter, springy version of meatloaf and let me know what you think. Are you gonna put it into your regular rotation? I wanna know. guys, thanks for watching this video. Be sure to click here if you want to subscribe and click over here if you want to continue watching more great videos like this.